Very good. Patter. And then trot again. When you are riding, you should be doing hundreds and hundreds of transitions. You don't just think, I've done well, I've done like one or two, three or four. It is all about transitions. Constantly trying to keep your horse focused and listening and responsive. Because if you don't, then you have a stiff, non-reactive horse. So do your half transition again, see if she's waiting. So bring her back as if you're going to walk. And then forward. Yeah, and then there you need a little bit more leg, Marsha. Forward again. Good, patter. And then almost bring her back. Good, and then forward. So if you have a horse that likes to anticipate, to take over what you are asking, these are really good transitions. This really tests, is it staying in front of my leg? Then back again. Oh. Good, and then forward. So like there, Marsha did really help her enough to keep her leg there. So she's got to support her a bit more. And then forward again, now forward. Now go large, change the rein. Now touch with your legs again. Think forward, very good. Right, and then the corners. Now she has to bend around these corners. So I talk about straightness. Straightness has to come on the long sides and on your short sides, you've got to think about bending and flexing so that you can really get your horse to bend around the corner. Again, you see a lot of people with the horse's quarters swinging away around the, cur the corners. Then you come to do a 10 meter circle or a 20 meter circle, the horse is disappearing. Why does the horse do that? Well, that's because the rider hasn't got it between the inside leg and the outside rein. So you've got to really think of turning the shoulder, supporting the horse with your outside leg, and really keeping the horse to follow underneath its own body. Now make your half transition again. Almost walk. I said almost walk, Marsha. Marsha, almost. Back again. Yeah, and forward. Well done. Are those legs on holiday today? Are you using them? Right, back again. Oh, good. And now forward. Very good. Now forward again. Yeah, and now touch her again. Touch her. Very good. So again, reaction. When I touch my horses with my leg, what do I, what am I looking for? Now I'm not looking for my horse to bark or shoot his head up in the air. I'm not asking it to disappear. I'm, up, I'm looking for, when I touch it, that it reacts forward and it pushes up into my hand. I don't want it to go tight and tent. I don't want it to be afraid of my leg, but she must or they must react thinking forward. And if they don't, we do a thing where we go for a good yeehaw. We forget about dressage and we do a thing where we click, kick, and off we go. Gallop around the arena once or twice. It's, it does not look like we're doing dressage at all, but it doesn't matter. It, doesn't ha it hasn't got to be perfect all the time. When I'm training, I don't expect, I'm not looking for it to be perfect. I'm doing it for reactions and suppleness. Forward again, forward again. That's it, well done. Now see if we can make her a bit softer. Now you can see when I make Marsha go a bit forward, more forward in the trot, she gets a bit stronger in her hands, so she gets a little bit stiffer. So Marsha has to just flex her again a little bit in the inside. So see if you can see the corner of her right, left eye, Marsha. Forward. So that's why Marsha likes going slow, because it feels better. Basically, just because it feels easier, Marsha goes slower. So rather than trying to soften her within the pace when she's going forward, Marsha just reverts back to where it feels comfortable, which is what we all do. Now, if we have a horse that's stiff one side more than the other, what do we tend to do? We always ride it on the side that's easier, because it's easier, it's nicer, it feels better. But actually, what you have to do is actually do more work on the side that feels horrible and less on the side that feels good, so that you even it up. Okay, let's see you can to transitions. Now, this might all be a bit boring to watch, but as I will show you later, all of this is what makes all the tricks become very, very easy. Tricks are easy. Anybody can do tricks. 
but it's how good and how well you can do it. And what makes you be able to do the trick really well and look effortless and have a really supple, responsive horse doing all these transitions? All my Grand Prix horses still do all of this stuff. It's all basics. And the basics are the foundation of your horse's career. Not having to think about just rushing it to get it to do a pre St. George, or my friend's got a horse at this level, I want to get my horse to that level. It's not about a race of getting it to wherever you want it. It's taking your time and trying to really work at doing it the best you can. Good, so now we're gonna do on and back on the circle, Marsha. So again, more transitions, go. Go. Marsha, go. <laughs> Go, Marsha, go. Go, Marsha, Marsha, go. Today. This is what I mean with Marsha. She's lovely, like she, lo she loves everything to be neat and perfect. And I make her do the absolute opposite, make everything really messy, and then I make it neat. So go again, go, yep. Go on. Today, Marsha, use those legs. Come on. <coughs> Jesus. Go. Round the school, go. Now, I don't care what it does, but this is exactly what I want you to see, that Marsha basically is afraid to use her legs to make it messy, because she thinks, well, you're all watching, and she doesn't want to look like she's not riding properly. But it doesn't matter. <coughs> Every single one of you, I bet you, has a problem like this, right? Every single person that has ridden will have been in this situation. Now go more forward. Go. Go! <laughs> no, don't use your legs, Marsha. They do move. Come on. Go. Go! Right, and now patter. And again. Now I'll show you on mine in a minute. Go. That's it. And now back. Now this is why, again, it's very, very important to show the difference and make your horse go forward. Now, it all looks very neat and tidy, but again, if I don't get after Marsha to make it go more forward, she ends up sitting there. It all looks really pretty, nice and neat. But at the end of the day, the horse actually isn't in front of her leg. So what happens is, is the, as the horse goes further up the level, Marsha will start having to work harder and harder and harder to make things work. So it's vital now that Marsha teaches her that when she touches her with her leg, the horse has to react forward. So go again. Go. Go on. Well done. That's it. I don't care if you have to kick like a pony club. Off you go. Go. Proper kick it. And again. That's it. Now patter. And so sometimes you have to be a bit more... You have to say, no, right, okay, I've asked you, I've asked you once, I've asked you twice, now I'm going to take my legs off, I'm going to give you one bigger kick, and then you sit quiet again. Then you let your legs hang loose. And now forward again. Go. Go. That's it. Now patter. And now relax your leg. And now forward again. Go. Go on, and forward. Is that good enough, Marsha? Marsha? Marsha. <laughs> right, now patter. Me and Audrey are getting a bit bored of this. Okay, down the long side. Oh. Forward. Medium. Go. Well done. Very good. Now you can clap and then you should go faster. she also really remember is to let go of her mouth okay there's no point sitting there holding with her hand and blocking her that she can't then go forward she must be able to give the rein now do a give and retake Marsha give and retake so you can see 
again, do it again so everyone can see, that she's not holding the horse together. And that, again, is very, very important. So you know that Marsha's not holding her on the bit, she's not forcing her to stay on the bit. The horse is in self-carriage, in a good balance. But the horse has to stay a little bit more responsive to her leg aids. Now change the rein through trot. Marsha's like a diesel, right? She slowly warms herself up. And then by the end of it, Marsha uses her legs and then we go forward. But it takes me first like half an hour just to get her to use her legs. That's it. Marsha likes it just to stay too neat. And I am the opposite. I don't mind if it's messy because I've got to make it messy to then make it nice and neat and tidy. Now soften your hand again. Good. Right, on the circle, now bring her back. And again, it is harder for her to do it on a circle because the horse obviously has to turn and stay balanced. So bring her back a little bit now, so see if you can collect it a little bit. Yeah, and now go forward again. Go, very good, patter. And then back again. Good, so back, yeah. And then forward again. Now go. Go. Good. And now back again. Now again, it still looks like Marsha has to do a bit too much work to make it go forward, but at least the horse is thinking forward. And again, this the more and more she does of these exercises, the easier it becomes. But Marsha mustn't settle for her having to work harder to make it go forward. Marsha has to always have the same leg aid. So that is a small touch. I don't want her to be like, come on, you've got to go. It's got to be from a light, soft touch. And then if she doesn't go from that soft touch, then you almost take your leg off, you give her one touch with the both legs, and then she has to react forward again. Now forward, and press, go. Very good. And again, touch, both legs. Touch, go. Go. Yeah. Now go large and then do it down the long side. Right, ready, steady, go. And again. And now back and patter. And then forward again down the next long side. Well done, patter, soften your hand and now go forward. That's it, and then just with your fingers. So with my fingers on the rein, I think of massaging the bit in the horse's mouth. Not that I have a strong fixed feeling. Very good. Now some horses come into atmospheres and can be really, really hot and that you can't get your legs on them. Right, now give her a little trot again. Oh. And other horses come into atmospheres and go a little bit inside themselves. So they shrink and they kind of go a bit behind your leg. So it really does depend on each horse and how they are in their character as to what they're like in different environments. So I have got some horses that go really, really hot and I'm like riding, like barely breathing. And then I've got other horses that I've got that are really like not behind my leg at all, but go into an atmosphere and shrink. So again, that becomes quite difficult when you've got a different horse in the arena to then at home. And the way of dealing with those sorts of situations, again, doing things like this, taking them places, putting them in an arena, not always riding a test. Ride them, go to a show, don't think of actually having a judge there, maybe just go and ride the test, but just train them through the, the test. So again, at the end of the session, what would I have not made Marsha do at the beginning of the session is to try and stretch the horse because safety always has to come first for these young horses. And also, you always get your best stretch at the end of the session. And that is because young horses at the moment at this stage don't really come, uh, come out relaxed enough to really stretch properly. But as you can see, she's worked really well and now she wants to really stretch down. And that's actually a very good stretch for a young horse. She's really open if you look how the length of her neck, she's really open in her frame, she's taking Marsha's hand forward, she's not curling off the bit, I don't want to see her behind the vertical, off the bit, I want her to take the hand forward, and again, staying in a lovely rhythm.